Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. And today we're going to be looking at a way to play Zoroark GX. And we're going to combine this with one of the fresh new approaches that we saw from the Brazilian Regional Championships where uh, Gabriel Monteiro, I want to say I'm close with that name, he managed to get top four uh, with a Garbodor Meowstic build. Now I've moved on to Zoroark because I believe he's a better partner now that he is available to us um, because you have a good support draw engine and I always felt that when I started testing the Garbodor list it was a bit hit and miss. Um, there are simply turns where you miss DCE and you lose the game because you're a spread behind. You basically lose like you know 120 or 150 damage from flying flipping at times when you miss DCE. I really think that's the most important card in this list. Um, so having Zoroark as your new backup provides two things for you. It means that you can uh, draw more cards and get into your combo pieces, more Tapu Kokos and more double colorless energies, which is actually really important because when you're a spread deck, you're very rarely dealing with the attacker. So every single turn, the opponent's going to be able to simply draw and then announce an attack to knock out a Tapu Koko. So, you know, after turn two or three, you're going to be losing DCs turn by turn. That's why you can see special charge. That's why I have Zoroark. So we can carry on cycling, drawing into Kokos, drawing into DCs. They're a big part of the deck. Um, and the second reason is because he can fend off against Drampagarb as well because he has Psychic Resistance and we have a couple of Acerola in the list and with a single energy attachment we can do some uh, one-hit knockouts on Garbodors with his attack which I'll get onto in a moment and basically force out GX Pokemon. That is what we want from them because we can prey on them with Necrozma GX who is also a big part player in this deck. So. Overall, it's a spread deck, but I've changed it up, taking out the Garbodor part, because although Garbodor is oppressive and slows the opponent down, which in theory can buy you turns to get more um, spreads off, um, I believe it's more optimal to draw more cards on our own end, so we can do our strategy as often as possible, um, end proof ourselves a lot more as well, um, even though we're pretty end proof because we uh, ready take prizes until we've got enough damage on the board to either devolve or to use Meowstic. Um, but we also have this backup of Zoroark who himself is a very good attacker when you're already using Tapu Koko to put prior damage on things. So I believe this is a much neater package and it works a lot more cleanly for me. You just draw more cards and I like drawing cards. It means that you can get your strategy off. So you can see on the uh, strength of this deck, it's obviously a spread deck and evolutions are rife in the format. So we've seen Espeon X fit into loads of different decks recently um, and just because we have this nice backup engine of Zoroark you are actually able to find your Meowstic, you're able to find Tapu Kokos and DCs every turn to be able to execute this strategy as often as possible so I think this is a pretty cool deck it was cool to see it make top four with the Garbodor engine uh, but I'm hoping that this is a more consistent way of bringing it into the standard format now that Shining Legends will be becoming legal very soon and this could indeed be a deck to watch out for for London People want to find a way to make Zoroark work, and this is one way that it could indeed um, spice up the metagame. So, let's jump into the list. It's all over the place. Bear in mind throughout the entire discussion that this is a spread deck. So, I think it's most important to start with the Tapu Kokos. This is one of the guys that gets the most damage on the board. His attack is immensely efficient for a double colorless energy. You do 20 to each of your opponent's Pokemon, and so often decks require Bridget to get going. Oftentimes, in getting Bridget, they need to put down a Tapu Lele. So you can imagine from turn two, if people want to go for their traditional Bridget approach, which, you know, they probably shouldn't go for, but many players still do this, um, it can be a DC for 100. And that's the active and four bench Pokemon. Um, and a DC for 100 spread around is really good. And it puts things in range for Zoroark to actually physically take knockouts if we need to go aggressive on big threats. Um, but also, just in general, puts a lot of damage counters on the board so that we can start using Meowstic and Espeon EX in here as well. So we have a three count, our best lead of course, because he has free retreat, good HP in the early turns, and just very efficient using that DC very nicely to get damage all over the shop. Really good card, as we've all seen. His lightning typing is also helpful for Ho-Oh GX, which is creeping back into um, Fire decks just because Drampagarb's so popular, and Ho-Oh is really good at dealing with Drampagarb with a Kiawe, and... Uh, yeah, Coco's typing, not irrelevant. Next up, we have two Necrozma GX. Necrozma, one of my favorite cards that came out of uh, Sun and Moon. 
Um, and he's shown his prowess in Expanded. We're going to try him out in Standard now as well. His GX attack is the main thing of note here. Black Ray GX for three colorless energy. Deals 100 damage to each of your opponent's GX and EX Pokemon unaffected by weakness or resistance. This is obviously amazing when we're going for a Devolve strategy because we can put counters on things like Tapu Lele's and also counters on big GX's like Metagross, like Gardevoir's, like Ninetales even. All sorts of GX Pokemon out there. Drampers, of course. Um, huge amounts of GX's and EX's in the format. And this is also really important against um, the Fire Decks because Fire Decks are, of course, something that we can't Devolve. So instead, we'll get a bunch of counters on the board and then use Meowstic. So we have the approach in both corners. You go for the Meowstic approach against uh, non-evolving decks, and you use Espeon a lot of the time for evolving decks. But you can still use Meowstic in most situations because it's just really good at making the most out of your damage counters. So Black Ray just puts an unholy amount of damage on the board, and uh, it is the main GX attack that we can go for. Bear in mind, we play Psychics in here, so we could go for Tapu Cure as well. It's very rare that you'll do that. It would be against exactly things like Decidueye that you'd do that. Um, but yeah, Black Ray, really, really powerful attack. He does have more to the card. Prismatic Burst is an option. 10 base and discard all Psychic from this Pokemon. It does 60 more for each energy you discard in this way. Um, so it can do 70 if you have the DC in one Psychic. That's fine. Um, especially because it can simply be more damage on the board to then help out with it influence or the Devolve. So... Um, it all works out nicely. More damage is basically all we need to get set up. And its ability, Light's End, it's a little thing that can help you out in the early turns against things like Drampa, preventing all damage done to this Pokemon by attacks from colorless Pokemon. Bear in mind, he could still Righteous Edge away DCEs, so you're probably best off attaching just a basic energy first, and then looking for the DCE for a Black Ray play, maybe later on in the game. So, yeah, really good card. Puts a silly amount of damage on the board at times, and we're going to make full benefit of that thanks to Coco's and S, uh, Meowstic and Espeon in here as well. So really, really good card. Here's the focal point and the main GX attack that we have available to us. So I've mentioned Meowstic and Espeon EX a lot. First of all, Espeon EX is the one that you're more comfortable with. And I think we've seen in a lot of lists lately. Miraculous Shine, devolving each of your opponent's evolved Pokemon, putting the highest stage evolution card back into their hand. What we're going to try and do is, of course, set up this damage with Coco Flips and with Po Town as well um, to really put things down to their little 60, 60 or 80 HP Pokemon, pick them all back up and take multiple knockouts in a turn and basically deplete their board state to where they have no attackers and then you can just come in and start sweeping with Zoroark or other attackers. So Espeon EX, still a threat to many evolution decks out there. Really good card. Next up, we're going to play a 2-2 line of Meowstic. I'm pretty sure this is the best Esper. Uh, don't quote me on it. <laughs> I think I can look at that in a minute, but I think this is the best Esper that we can play. We do have Psychic Energy in here, but just 10 damage? Sure, we'll take it. Um, but it's all about the Meowstic. Meowstic has the Ear Influence attack, which is what we're most interested in here. Move as many damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon as you like to any of your opponent's other Pokemon in any way that you like. Basically, you count your entire opponent's board's damage counters and then you just splash them any way you want. This can set up Espeon X even further if you need to, uh, but more often than not it's against non-evolving decks where we can take all this uh, splashed out damage and target down, you know, the stuff with energy or the stuff that's really threatening our board. Uh, so it really comes together very nicely after doing these slow progressive turns of spreading all becomes very neat and clever once you've got this Meowstic to come off. We play a 2-2 line, it's too important to prize, and uh, oftentimes when your opponent sees an Esper and they see you spreading, they're probably going to target the Esper a lot of the time, which is actually a good thing for you, uh, because we play a 2-2 line and we have the Stretcher. Oftentimes it's not a big problem for us, um, and it's actually like secretly helpful to us. When we have such draw in this deck, Unlike the Garbodor deck, if they deal with the Esper or the Meowstic that's chilling on the bench, it's really bad for them because it's hard for them to redevelop, especially under Ability Lock. With our list, we can just get another Esper easily a lot of the time just because we can draw, you know, like 10 cards in a turn if we combine a supporter with our trades. Um, we can easily get an Esper back online, start threatening all over again, and they've wasted a Guzma trying to deal with something that's not going to be doing more damage. Uh, most of the time they're moving things like Coco out the way uh, to try and target single prizes. That's always fine. We don't mind that. So 
That's why we play the 2-2 count. It influence is a big part of the deck, of course. So Zoroark does provide the engine of the deck. I've mentioned it so many times. We are trying to be combo focused. It is potentially a downside of the deck, but it all comes together nicely when you have the addition of trade during your turns. Once during a turn, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, draw two cards. Very good stuff. We actually have quite a good amount of fodder. Um, Potown is always good fodder. Once we've got some on the board, oftentimes we'll be getting rid of things like Sycamores as well, because they're in here mainly to buffer us in the early turns. But once we start having trade around, we can start getting rid of them because our hand sizes will be too high. Um, and excess Pokemon sometimes go in the bin. Things like your excess Necrozma are too important to play just one of. Uh, but you can start binning him. And uh, yeah, oftentimes we don't have too many painful trades. And in the process, we're drawing more cards. Getting us into some combos, which we need to do. Oftentimes digging for DCE. That's like the biggest thing I find myself looking for. And uh, it's no no brainer really why we need to do that. So why else is he great? Well, he's a 210 HP Pokemon with a Psychic Resist. This is really awesome for Garbodor. Oftentimes people see things like Coco. They see things like Necrozma. And they go, okay, I'm a Garbodor deck. I'll just attack with my Trash Launchers. That's fine. I can get around this sort of sniping play. But when we have Zoroark as a backup attacker, it's really not going to be very good for them because Riotous Beating does 20 times the amount of each of your Pokemon in play. So we can hit exactly 120 with a full bench. That's perfect, of course, for dealing with Garbodors. And with that resistance, we don't really need to play too many items if they're not really pressuring us. And we also have Ace of Roller in here as well. So if they go for a Garbodor approach, we can go aggro Zoroark, Ace Roller if they start hitting us for even two hit KOs, um, and basically force them to start putting down Lele's, start putting down Drampers, and that's when we flip the switch and become a spread deck all over again, get a Black Ray GX off, and um, spread that damage around. So really good as an attacker against exactly Garbodor variants as well. Uh, and in general, doing two hit KOs is fine, because you can then use it influence later on to move that 120 or so damage around so really good as a draw engine throughout the deck and also can get involved in a scrap as well bear in mind we do play heavy po town so you have to be careful with sequencing especially against things like dramper because they can sometimes one hit ko you if po town's not dealt with but we play a high field blower count so we should be able to get around it and of course in a matchup against dramper oftentimes we'll be trading away our po towns <laughs> because we obviously don't need them uh, this is the best Zerua because we don't play Dark Energy, so we can have the option to ram bear that in mind. Uh, finally for the Pokemon, Tapu Lele GX is obviously the big consistency card that everyone plays. Shouldn't have to explain it at this point, but Energy Drive also an option when you have DCE. And Tapu Cure an option when you play Psychic Energy. Like I said, most of the time we rely on Necrozma for damage, uh, but Tapu Cure can also come in if you have to against uh, other spread decks. Maybe a mirror match, who knows. So let's move on to the items. I've tried to be as streamlined as items as possible. Uh, there's some interesting counts in here and I'm gonna go through them with you all now. First of all, special charge. I believe it's integral to the deck because DC is so important. When you're sacrificing them turn after turn because you're not physically taking prizes, you're setting up damage. It means they literally just announce their attacks and get through like three Tapu Cocos turn after turn. Um, we need to special charge, get back those DCs so we can still attack with Zoroark, Lele and Necrozma to get that extra bit of damage in, or even more Coco spreads, to be honest. So yeah, Special Charge, I think, is integral. Really nice for uh, recovering this card. The most important card in the deck a lot of the time. Uh, one Rescue Stretcher, again, good for recycling Coco. If you've had to discard Espeon EX, or if they start targeting down your Meowstic pieces, you can recover all of these. Very nice. Three Field Blowers, Garbodor is rife, and it's good to get rid of... Um, Ability lock so we can keep trading and getting our strategy off and also it gets rid of opposing po towns in those specific matchups as well um, Because then uh, Zoroark can tank hits and that's obviously important. So uh, Yeah, three field blower very high count very useful and helps us win the stadium war very con Convincingly as well with four po town and three field blower. We're winning that war I would say a lot of the time. So po town will be in effect uh, For the majority of the game very good stuff uh, then we're going to play four Ultra Ball, the big consistency card. Very simple. Get into your Zoroarts, get into multiple Cocos. Go for the old Lele Bridget plays as you normally do. Classic stuff. Four Po Town. It's an MVP against the Evolution decks, of course. There's the likes of uh, Greninja, which would otherwise be a pretty bad matchup. 
Um, there's also Gardevoir, of course, Metagross, and a few other evolutions out there as well that we can help sweep up, just getting more damage on the board. Even if it's not putting them immediately in range of things like Espeon, um, it's getting more counters around, so you can do Ear Influence, or you can just set them up that little bit quicker for the Espeon EX plays. Very good stuff. On to supporters, I'm choosing to play one Mallow because it's just so amazing with Zoroark. Uh, this was previously a Sycamore, but as soon as you get into your Zoroarks, a lot of the time you don't want a Sycamore anymore. So it's a little bit greedy from me, but really it's to demonstrate the power of the trade ability. It is very good, it guarantees you DCE, which is like a big enough reason to play the card. I don't think I've played more Mallows unless you want to cut on Guzmas or Acerolas. Um, but Mallow is a really cheeky combo with Zoroark. I feel like you only need to weave it in once or twice a game though. So I think the low count is fine, but benefit from it hugely when you do go for that uh, play. Because it's very good for guaranteeing stuff. Two counts of Bridget. Um, more and more often I see myself playing a two count. Especially when you have Zoroark to trade. Uh, as you can see, I play two of of all the important stuff. The only thing I'm not playing a two of is Espeon. But um, against those decks, you could still go for Ear Influence to move all those spread damage to start taking prizes. And then hopefully you ask, uh, access Espeon from the prize cards. So uh, playing two counts of all these things. One, because we have space, but also because we can trade them away once we've used our first Bridget and the other one's not prized. Yeah, super happy because you've got a free card you can mill. Um, but you're also now safe from prizing it. Well, not safe, but much safer. Much, much safer indeed. The two way Cerola, I've already mentioned, big against um, Garbodor variants to force them into a GX fight, really. Uh, very good combo with Zoroark, seeing as though he only requires one attachment of the DCE. You can cycle him very nicely. Also helps you cycle against Galissapod as well, which is also a fairly awkward matchup for us because they will be undoing some damage that they take as well with their own acerolas and they can deal with cocos very efficiently oftentimes you'll be trying to burn acerolas from both players or you'll be trying to burn his while you use your own ones with zoroark you'll both go for like two hits for a while and then basically because we have the draw engine on our side hopefully we can start um depleting their resources and force them into awkward spots where we can start dealing with them so that's the intention acerola going to be really nice mainly against all the garbador decks and in general if you can tank with anything you're happy uh, even things like Lele, you can Lele, um, DC attack, Acer Roller once you've tanked hit, then put down <laughs> the Lele back again, and then get the Acer Roller back or any other supporter that you want for the following turn. So it's a nice, neat combo. Two Guzma, uh, even though we are a spread deck, I like playing Guzma in here. As a stalling option, it can be really nice, buying you free turns of Flying Flip, basically forcing your opponent to dig for things like Floatstone is really big, or they Guzma around Coco. Uh, so the Coco keeps his DCE, and that's also a really big deal a lot of the time. Uh, so slowing them down is going to be nice, and um, in general, once you set things up for knockouts, oftentimes Zoroark will be your sweeper, and Guzmaring up the two prize Leles is oftentimes our win condition, so I like the two counts. And then four counts of N, and three Sycamore, as I said. Cut down from four just to sneak in the Mallow, just because I thought it was neat, uh, but N also very important for hurting your own opponent's outs, especially because we're not taking prizes for a bunch of turns while we're setting up damage, and it's always on our side, really. And the Sycamore can be nice discard draw in the early turns if your hand would otherwise be bad, uh, because our draw engine isn't online until we found a bunch of Zeruas and got into our Zoroarks, so he can still be helpful, um, but be careful about discard draw. We are quite a resource-minded deck, so bear that in mind. Two choice band, it's extra damage. Um, I would kind of like to fit in more. Again, it's one of these things, if you're not happy with Acer Roller or you think you can lower the Guzma or Bridget counts, uh, be my guest. More damage is good because every damage counter counts when you're going to turn it into an ear influence. So at the moment we can squeeze in two. Uh, you could try and fit in more if you want to be greedy. And two Floatstone, I think in combination with double Guzma, I'm pretty content that that can move us out of our dudes. Um, we have flying flips, so a lot of the time we have free... Freedom of movement from those things. Uh, but yeah, four total switching outs is pretty nice. And we're going to round it off with 10 energy, I think, with the special charges as well. We recycle the most important card. Psychic energy, of course, important for the ear influence. Uh, it's oftentimes used for the Black Ray and also oftentimes used for Miraculous Shine. I think it's just, again, a nice, neat number that fits into the deck nicely. I think you could potentially go down to five um, Psychic but you have to really ration them at that point. And I'd rather just be safe and allow yourself to trade them off if you really need to. So 
yeah, I think uh, 10 is a pretty solid count for me. So let's look at different cards that we could play in the deck. We're already playing Zoroark. Why not play the Mind Jack Zoroark? He can put a lot of damage counters on the board himself. The main reason I don't like playing this card is because there's anti-synergy here. You want your opponent to put Pokemon on the bench so that you can uh, get more value from spread. They're already disincentivized in this, therefore Mind Jack is probably not doing a lot of damage. And uh, being a seventh prize isn't that relevant when we have so many single prizes already on the board. The Cocos, the Espers and Meowsticks and all that good stuff. So I don't think he fits the role perfectly. Um, I'd rather be hitting with the GX more than likely so that we can actually tank hits. Uh, and from there, I don't think there's many Pokemon I would consider. Of course, it was originally a Garbodor variant. So if you want to go more defensive and more... I guess it's more disruptive. Uh, you could go Garbodor. I've made my case why I like Zoroark as a combo. I think you get your strategy done a lot more. And that's probably the most important thing. But Garbatoxin does shut down a huge part of the format right now. So uh, I wouldn't blame you if you went Garbodor approach at all. Uh, let's look at some supporters. Because we can draw so many cards with Zoroark, it's actually pretty cool that you can play some disruption supporters. Delinquent, since Versus Seeker has gone, has really seen like very little play. Um, but you can see the counts of like two Ace Roller that could be subbed out for Delinquent. And at times you can just catch your opponent. They've gone for a greedy Bridget play turn one. The hand is at three cards, knowing that they can just Sycamore it all away next turn. But no, they can't because we can just Delinquent them. And we're already playing a four count of Stadiums. So potentially one or two Delinquents in here could really swing the tide of games. In a similar vein, things like Skull Grunt and things like Flare Grunt, as well as Enhanced Hammer, um, are all valid options to slow down the opponent's physical attachments so they're much less likely to attack for your Cocos. Again, trying to buy yourself turns at any point in the game can be helpful. Um, buying turns buys you a lot of damage and damage all adds up to win us the game basically. So the main reason I'm not playing E-Hammer, I had it in here with the intention of improving Grandpa but it actually hurt my item usage and I figured out that it's best to go Agro Zoroark into Necrozma into Spread. Uh, and the E-Hammer doesn't actually help that play. Um, it actually disincentivizes them to use Drampa. Um, and we want them to put those into play. So that's why I don't have the E-Hammer. However, the supporter options would probably also be quite good. So um, definitely things worth considering there. And other than that, it would be counts of things. Trying to work in a third choice band would, would never be too bad. And uh, yeah, I think overall I'm fairly happy with the list. And uh, we're going to jump to some games now. I've been learning it as I go. Uh, ooh, where have I put it? <laughs> there it is. Uh, I've had a few iterations of the deck. This is the one that I've most recently been trying. And uh, first of all, I kicked off with a Garbodor build and I wasn't too happy. Uh, but seeing it with Zoroark, it seems to draw a lot cleaner. And uh, hopefully the scheme can come together a lot more often now that we have trade on our side. So let's see it in action and see if Zoro spread can be as dangerous as Garb spread. Um, I really like spread in the format right now. I think there's enough evolution decks to make it viable. Not many people are playing Mr. Mime and cross your fingers that they don't. That's one of the big reasons why the Garbodor deck is probably safer uh, because you can turn off Mr. Mime and we can't. But Zoroark can KO it, so just pray. <laughs> Who knows? We'll see. Uh, I, I really don't think many people will play Mr. Mime in London, so I think you can get away with a spread deck. I think it's a pretty good idea. So, unfortunately leading Lele would have been an amazing Bridget turn if we just had a different Pokemon. We play a lot of basics as well. Um, but regardless, looks like we're up against the Guardi deck. So our good old Devolve shenanigans will be what we're going for here. One other issue with Zoroark is that he is of course two easy prizes for Gallade. But normally you don't really mind too much because you're just going to be getting lots of counters on the board and going for spreads so we're going to simply i think it's fine to commit the choice band it's not too big of a deal in this deck we're going to go for the end after attaching to lele and hoping to find some basics not getting too much from that that's actually a really bad hand that we've drawn into we're going to uh, go for this i think it's most important to just grab ourselves a lele for next turn because otherwise we'll be left with pretty much nothing. So we'll just... Uh... I went for the Ultra Ball first because these are cards that we really don't need too much in the matchup. We could have held the Ultra Ball, but I think this is fine. Also, if they're going to end us out of the Lele, that's also still fine. Just because uh, 
we're not putting a Lele down on the board, and uh, that could potentially be a Zoroark space, so good news there. We see the opponent actually discard a Rolts, which probably is a telltale sign that they have Stretcher in hand, or they just want to bridge it, and they're taking a risk. <laughs> We're going to see a Tapu Lele come down. They've not seen much from our side, to be honest. They've seen the Potown, which is probably sketchy. He probably thinks we're Drampa Garb, to be honest. So maybe his Ultra Ball is trying to get rid of non-item cards, which could indeed be the case. That's the only upside of us having a bad turn one. The opponent is more likely to go for their normal approach and then be like, oh damn, I've just Bridgeted against a spread deck. Whoops. So hopefully that works out for us. Hooray for bad starts. Okay, we're going to just Bridget here. Because now we top deck the backup N. I think that's ideal. And uh, we can grab ourselves a Coco, which we'll definitely do. And I think I'm just going to go double Zerua. He doesn't look prepped to go for a Guardian attack for a knockout. He would have to go Spring attach 369 another yeah they need way too much we can go for this uh -huh. and 100 is more than 40 so we will go for the flying flip and see what they want to do about that Again, the special charge making life a little bit easier. I feel less bad about retreating now that we have the special charge. So this looks like an artillery build. Oftentimes we see artillery plus Sylvie on these days, but they've opted to uh, not search out the EV just yet. They're going to pay retreat into their Tapu Lele, which is interesting. Going to see an Ultra Ball as well. Got rid of a rare candy and a Curlia. These are interesting discards. Do they need to find themselves up Tittery now? Oh, they've gone for Tapu Lele. That's another bench Pokemon for us. That's really good. Gonna help add up some tasty damage here. And they're gonna grab themselves a Sycamore. It looks like they wanna dig hard. And uh, we are gonna see the rescue stretcher now. Are they just going to go instant curlier? Are they going to put them both back in? Yeah, they're going to put them both back in. Shuffle it up and get seven fresh cards here. Let's see if they can combine Field Blower with some evolutions. That's really what they're looking for. No Field Blower, so more damage. Getting on the board. Oh my goodness, this is uh, really good. This is nuts. Getting the Necrozma, don't need it, we'll just end straight away. Looking for some Zoroarks. And we do find ourselves one, which is nice. I really don't mind if he wants to Gallade and feed us, because Coco stays around. And Coco is really good. Uh, we don't need Field Blower, I don't think. We play three, so we can get them anytime. Uh, keep the slot open for Espeon. It is coming to that time, but I think the Coco will go down first. Their retreat was really curious, though. I think we can get away with it. And we'll get some more flippage going. So much damage. So one flip away from all of these, even if they do evolve. And if they evolve before field blowering, yeah, they just have to concede. They can't do anything. They couldn't remove Potown, so they lost. That's pretty much the plan. Espeon is good. And uh, yeah, nice win against Gardi. Our opponent figured out very quickly that it was going to be too tricky. Too much damage had already racked up. I think their retreat into the uh, Tapu Lele wasn't a great choice. But we'll see here what we can do in the second game. We had one Zoroark developed and the draw engine was going to just start getting online. Uh, didn't get to show much other than the fact that we have very strong early game against evolution decks. We both mulligan once. Let's see what our opponent's playing. I saw a multitude of types. I wonder what it's going to be. Well, that's our mulligan. Let's see their hand. Oh, it's another Gardevoir. Haha. 
Great news. Don't need to bench the Esper. Okay, again, they don't know what we're playing. Oh, did, what did they see from our uh, our mull? I can't remember what they saw. Who knows? But this could be a textbook Lele Bridget. Oh boy, it's over. <laughs> they they Lele Bridgeted. They did the best turn one in the game, and now they lost because of it. I'm just kidding. This is far from over, but uh, we'll see. This is good for us, just because he's filled the board with 60 HP Pokemon. Our start is pretty poor, though. Esper, are you ever better than... Espeon? Almost never better. I'm going to accept that we are unlikely to Coco this turn. That's a terrible start. Okay. We'll pass. We develop Potown, <laughs> at least. We can end away his magical ribbon. But we really, need to, we really need to develop some Pokemon. Double Lele starts from us. Feels bad, man. Okay, they're evolving without the field blower, which is good news. Oh, sequencing! <laughs> Rip. Ripperino. What's going on here, folks? Oh, both blowers gone as well, so our Potowns are going to be good from here on in if he can't get any more evolutions this turn. I'm going to see the retreat. Oh my goodness, no more evolutions. We're going to get full value from Potown. This is great news. And here comes their three chosen cards. Ooh, Bridget is nice. Oh, I want to end away. I really want to end away this ribbon. Hmm. Let's think about this. If I attach 60, he can go Rare Candy Guardy. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. He could win if we do that. Doesn't even need the candy, to be honest. And it's likely because he's ribboned. If I bridge it, he can't win, but we're not getting Potown for all of this stuff. N doesn't guarantee the Potown, of course. I think this is best. For the longevity of our game, I think this is best. Prize 2 DCE, which is a bit rip gonna be pretty rough for us. Let's get some damage in. That's the Sylveon ready to go. And let's see. Guardi Evolution. Rare Candy Guardi Evolution. How many springs are coming down here? He's a floatstone for this S for this Sylveon as well. So 150, 180, spring to the active to retreat, yeah. Alright then, and a Lely of their own, they're not done yet. They're going to end us, that's a big favour. To an equally disappointing hand. They are going to pay retreat though, and they're going to infinite force for two prizes. They're going to get the artillery down before our Poe Town, which is a bit sad. Get a couple more cards in there. And 180. Bopping us in the face. Okay. So. Field blower, I believe, is important for us surviving. 
3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 2, 10. Uh, we need to play N here. Going for a uh, Zara Lock is too greedy. I can't get rid of the special charge at this point because uh, we've prized two DCs. We want to try and find Zara Lock. Okay, we find some stuff. We don't need this float stone. Well, 15. It's too easy if I attach to Zoroark, so I think it just has to be a flip play. It's going to be a hard graft for us at this point. We've waste, we've missed a lot of turns of damage just because of two slow turns. You saw how easy it was for us last game when we just got the flips online. It's a lot slower this time for us. Then float stoning is good news. Plus five plus eight, one sixty two ten damage on the board. I'm just thinking if it's ever an ear influence in a few turns time. So this goes to four, two prizes. It's getting scary. Definitely getting scary. The Crossman probably gonna be too slow here. How many Guzmas he played? Three, six, nine, three, six. The Crossman could be our best bet to come back into this game though. We'll see what happens off this end and we have some trades after this as well. Well, because we missed DC, the, the choice is pretty clear that we have to go in a Cosma. We can still dig for cards. Guzma might be nice in the coming turn, so I'm going to sack the Acerola. I think I'll also sack the Psychic Energy. Hmm. So, how many red candies have been played? Only one. It makes the Devolve play look a little less appealing. It forces Rare Candy here, which is nice. We also don't have a Potown. If I had a Potown, it, was, it would be much nicer to Devolve this turn. Hmm. Dig once more for Zoroark, then dig for Potown, then dig for Devolve. This is... This is some... Um, some madness. I think we just do this thin, thin old deck. This is going to be hard. Zoroark, my tanky boy, you got this. You got this, mate. No Guzma is what we require here. Nine twelve. One spring, two draws of artillery. Float stoning the artillery is fine. Could be his GX turn if he doesn't want to just hit us for ninety. Oh, there's Guzma. Yeah, that's really bad for us. It means we can't Necrozma now. 
Mm, drat. Okay. So we need to. The artillery makes life so much harder. Is a Guzma play better than an N play? I've played one Guzma. We need to see what's in these trades, first of all. If we get Potown energy in these next two trades, it's going to be interesting. There's energy. No Potown is rough. No Potown is very rough. Ah, oh, man. Hmm. That puts us in such a bad spot. Don't think it's winnable. We'll try stuff. I'm going to try and fill his hand with some nonsense with a devolve play, I think. Just going to make sure. 6, 9, 12. It's so easy. So easy. Uh, I'm not happy about this. <laughs> okay, we're dead. Probably. We're probably dead. Huh. Weird. Hmm. It's really definitely to play this turn. It's just the longevity of this game doesn't look great this to 40, this to 70. It's just that po town away basically is all we were from winning this game. Could do 100 for everything, 369, take the risk but you can't find energy this turn. We're all in I guess. Spring, double spring for game. Spring Sycamore. He should be able to find it off this. Has a lot of outs. Choice ban, threats of damage, BM hype. Yeah. Hmm. That was a bit of a mess. Just a messy opening few turns. It's pretty sad for the deck. Tried to find a line, but we didn't get there. E hammers could have been good there. I was trying the list with E hammers and then took them out because <laughs> my item usage was too high. E hammers, an interesting take there. I think a takeaway message was we probably win if we had E hammers in that list. But also, we win if our hand isn't garbage for the first three turns. Hmm. I think prizing 2DC is also a big <laughs> reason why we lost that game. I've said throughout the discussion portion that DC is the most important card and we whiffed it a bit. Lots of factors there. We actually weren't far at all even with all of that, all of those issues. I still feel in a best of three we should always win Guardi. 
Well, it would be very hard to lose Guardian in a best of three a lot of the time with the tools we have in our list. Man, something's loading or not loading. Let's find out the game. I'm bored. No time to waste. No time to waste. Alrighty. We have a coin flip and we won it. Great news. Starting with the Esper. Cheeky little fella. See so a Tapu Lele. So sell her to our mate. How's it going, mate? We have one of our Bridgets in the deck. Good thing. Ooh, price two Coco. That's potentially an issue if we need him. We're going to go Bridget, though. Because I can Ultra Ball Mallow with Zoroark next turn, and that sounds like a good play. Play it cool. Play it cool. Don't need to put down the stadium. Also, I might need to discard it <laughs> with the Ultra Ball next turn. Let's see what our opponent's playing. Even, like, blind, I think this is a good pick for Bridget a lot of the time. Looks like we're up against uh, Metagross. Acerola bouncing with Zoroark is even good against Metagross, but... I think we'll Ultra Ball, grab Zoroark, then trade in to try and find DC Float. Oh, it's a uh, Solgaleo list. That's also fine. Ooh, getting Float Stone makes life easier. We actually can't fit everything in now that we top deck Float Stone. I would have to discard the Float Stone. Just to find Float Stone. But it also finds the DCE. Uh, I think we go this route instead. We just discard Special Charge and Mallow and just Lele for a supporter. A different supporter, I should say. Trading with Mallow is fun and all, but we've not been able to get it off in the last couple of games. Didn't need to in the first game, we were absolutely running. Could have been Leleing for a delinquent right now, just saying. Keep an eye on it. Because we're up against Sogolo, the Potam will never affect us. That's a lot of DCs. That's what we're after. I know Zoroark's a bit of a shame, but uh, we'll just get the flip on. So we face three out of three evolution decks when I'm trying to profile a Devolve deck. It's pretty fun. Not seeing much of the Meowstic interactions, mainly because Espiony X is the better option against that. In fairness, though, last game the Meowstic would have been nuts after our Necrozma. It's just we happen to die the turn we necrozma <laughs> Okay. Heavy ball for Solgaleo. Looks like he's got himself a rare candy play. Still gets him down to 50. It's to the Po Town. There's the attachment. Is he going to Ultra Road? He is. That means no pressure. That means a free flying flip. Where's he going to put all this energy? Because we're going to... We're going to devolve his little, his little guys. And this is going down after one flip, which we guarantee. He might just have to pile in on the Lele. Am 
my goodness, that is a brave soul burst. Very brave. Guzma, not going to be a great stall card uh, in this matchup. We don't need to do anything but the flip here. I'm going to sneak in an attachment on a Zoroa. We see a Tapu Lele come down. Sycamore as well. Having to dump a Solgaleo. You can see a field blower for the Potown, which is actually a big deal. Gonna see some Cosmo Ems hit the board. At least one, maybe two. Looks like definitely two. See the Ultra Road into the Lele. Man, he whiffed energy off the Sycamore. That is rough. That is rough. So, Potown comes in. Uh, missing energy. Man, that's incredible. Don't think we'll have time for the Crosma, even though there's currently 400 damage on the board. That is one of the upsides of the Garbodor list. It did play elixirs for quick Necrozma plays. We've prioritized other stuff this game. I think I just keep the DC around actually. Uh, we're not taking prizes, so we don't even need to end proof. He needs to play a supporter to get an energy next turn, so this spread is fine. If he can't deal with the Potown again, it means the Cosmoems will all be in range when he evolves. So yeah, this is in range now, exactly 90. See a Choice Band and a Sycamore. Two Field Blows already gone as well. Just an Energy Drive. So... Putting down Necrozma seems fine. Gonna burn this. I'm gonna play N. I basically want to bait him to attack the Necrozma. <laughs> and we want to start looking for Zoroark to try and find our, uh, our Espeon EX. Well, you can just ram. It's 20 more damage. We have an Esper on the board. 20 damage is not irrelevant. We have 8, 9, 10, 160, uh, 250, 340, 400 damage on the board. He's going to target Esper. That's fine. We have another one in hand. It's an Oniex. It's the Ultra Road. And the Lele once again, his only attacker all game has been the Tapu Lele. This looks like a pretty good time. That's 400 damage. I just hit the board and another Esper came down. Seems all right. Our hand is really rough though. Not developing the Zoroarks maybe has been greedy on my part. Ending us out of this hand is actually fine. We're likely to get a better hand, to be honest. Yeah, that's a better hand. Can he find... Yeah, he's finally found energy, so he can uh, take two prizes this turn. The Sunsteel Strike. Let's 
So, we can win the game many ways here. And top decking the psychic energy does it. Uh, yep. Nice and simple. Didn't need the Zoroark at all. But we would have had far more outs off the end, which is always good news. So let's Mystic Meg some of this damage over. Lots of damage there. Another evolution deck. And uh, unfortunately losing against one. But we managed to get the job done against two of the stage twos that we faced. Didn't get shot off against Drampa. It does take a different look because uh, I was already dead. Um, because you go heavy Zoroark. But that's something that you guys can figure out on your way to playing this deck. Really cool to see. Wow, MVP did 740 damage. Not bad. Oh no, Necrozma didn't do 740, but he did 400. That's, that's a good chunk, I'd say. And that's why he is the focal point of the deck. Uh, we've got some trades in. Great, so I can start making more Shining Legends decks. Hooray. I think that's me trying to get Shining Genesex. So um, hopefully we can get Venusaur Genesex out pretty soon. But yeah, um, let me know what you guys think about the Meowstic deck in general. Do you prefer Zoroark? Do you prefer Garbodor? The debate rages on. We saw trade in action helping us dig a little bit harder into the deck. And I think that is what this deck needs. You saw that we had some awkward hands. We do suffer from those at times, even with trade, but I think it's just unmanageable when you play Garbodor more often than not. You hurt your outs way more by playing Garbodor because you can't use your own Leylades, you can't use your own Ultra Balls as effectively, so I much prefer having the safety net of Zoroark to execute this very difficult combo-based strategy. So, as I said, let me know down below what you think of the list and what more you want to see from Shining Legends. We're going to try and get like two or three more Shining Legends exclusive decks out there pre-Crimson Invasion, but then Crimson Invasion is coming. Don't worry, there's going to be plenty of new content. Um, I think I'm going to try and do a week of Boswell and a week of Sil Valley because both of those cards uh, can take many different directions, and I think they're some of the best of the new sets. So keep an eye out for Crimson Invasion. We are starting to make lists, starting to test it this weekend as well. So stay tuned on the channel. Leave a like to this video if you did. Subscribe if you've not already. For now, though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke, and I'll be seeing you guys next time. Cheers.